and welcome to this second video in my series on making maps using QGIS. In this video, I'll be focusing on loading data, organizing data, getting it into QGIS. So let's uh, try and see how we can do this. Our first step will be to find the data. And in this case, I'll just be Googling it. And um, I wanted to use some data from this natural earth data set, which is a global data set. So I just Google natural earth download on the data set. And the data I want is cultural data. So, and I want it in this uh, one to 10 million data set. So I'll just go in here and I want these cities and um, just click download and that. And I also wanted this data set called populated places. Um, that. And I also download that. These data sets have a about that you can read and you can read something about how some of the attributes have been created and calculated. I will also want the data set from EA. So I'll just Google this global Gopa. And again here, I'll simply download this data set. So basically these data sets have been chosen because they demonstrate different aspects of the process of making a map and they are freely available. So you can just um, pick them up. I've now downloaded the data and it's now we have to consider how we want to structure the data on our hard drive. So you've got different approaches. Firstly, I will have a D drive for my data. And on that, I will typically have some different project structures. This project here, I will simply make a folder or a QGIS map. And um, And in this QGIS map, we now have two different strategies we can choose from. So normally, if you have a lot of national data that you'll be using in lots of projects, it might be a good idea to create a shared data folder outside your project folder, where you have data that used in many projects. If you, in this case, have some relatively simple data that you can just download again. And I know that I will be throwing it out and I'll be modifying it shortly. So in this case, I would probably prefer not to make a shared folder, but make a folder inside my project. Uh, download data or something like it, which contains data that I haven't invested that much in, data that I can throw out and um, always reestablish because one of the things is that you really quickly get a lot of data lying around. I want you decided on your strategy of where you want to store things. And I do really recommend creating a folder for each project. Um, and I'll show you why in one of the later videos, you can start adding your data to that folder. So I'll just look at my countries. And this is a shape file. So you have a SHP file here. It also has a lot of additional files associated with them. You need all of them because even though they in QGIS only appear as one data set, they are different aspects of that data set. So you have to grab all of them and copy to your folder. And I'll do the same for my populated places. That's also a shape file. And finally, for my global land cover, so this is a raster file. So the files here are a different structure, but there's a TIFF file, which is a main file. And then there are a lot of support files. This is a 
basically a word, it's a word document or some documentation of the pro, of the data. So just like with shape files, you'll be needing all of these additional files. Some of them are specific for um, RJS, so you could have in some situations where all of your raster data is ingested in one TIFF file that can be done. But sometimes you have all of these additional files to make sure that if that's the case, that you grab all of them and copy to your folder. As a subfolder, which has no importance for us. So now I have all my data downloaded into this folder and I'm ready to start loading the data into QGIS. So I'll just launch QGIS. And this is a brand new installation of QGIS. The only thing I've done is that I have changed the language of the user interface from Danish into English. Um, in the comments, there is a, a description of how to, uh, to do that. Simply this because it's easier to follow instruction videos, etc. if you use the same user interface language. But this is what QGIS looks like when it starts. And for organizing the data, we have this browser. And here we have some my D drive with my data. And here we have my QGIS map. And here we have my downloaded. And in here we can see our different data elements. We can also see that there's our folders. So these are my local drives. There's also something called VMS and XYZ files and VMS file. So all of these different file types here are external data, so they're online data that are not located on your computer. You will typically add many of these links to online data so set yourself. QGIS is born with some links. So we down in this XYZ work tiles, we have OpenStreetMap that we'll be using in a moment. When loading your data into your map, which is going to be this area here, it's important that if you have a project like I have, where the data comes from different data sources and where some of the data is raster data, so this global land cover, and some of it, these populated places and countries are vector data, it's a good idea to start by loading the raster data. And simply because that when we work with geospatial data, there's something that's called a coordinate reference system, a way of linking the coordinates in the file to a location on the earth. And raster files have difficulty in, as we call them, to rewrap to another one. So they can't transform from one coordinate reference system to another without the loss of speed and accuracy. So if you have a mixture of raster and vector data, start by loading your raster data. In this case, my global land cover. And you can see this thing about these coordinate reference systems. I'll just go to the screen here. So down in the corner, we have a coordinate. I'll just, uh, I'll just move over to the other side of the screen. So, um, here we have this coordinate reference system, and if I click on it, I'll get a further description of. So this is one that is useful for Europe. So this is the name of it. So this is a Lambert equal area, um, which is the one that all official EU projects at this scale use. If I now load these vector files of countries. You'll see that the world looks a wee bit strange. That's because it has now been displayed in the coordinate reference system, specifically the project of our coordinate reference system, so that these data are displayed so they match our raster data. 
if I had loaded them in different order, the first layer that I load is the one that designed on my project coordinate system. Of course, I can change this. There's lots more in the video on working with coordinate reference systems in the description. So we have now loaded our data. I just need to load my populated places. Basically the same approach. I just can drag them in. Now we're ready to go on to the next video where we'll be talking about filtering it. So we only have data for Europe and only those towns that we're interested in. So hopefully see you in the next video. Bye.